Hello everyone, Uncle Vince here from AutoIndustria.com. What we have here is the new Jet2 X70 Plus. It retails for 1.499 million. <laughs> really, I can't do that voice with any kind of consistency. It's without getting flagged by YouTube. But still, what we have is the Jetour X70 Plus. And yes, it is being offered for 1.499 million, which I think is actually something very interesting. Now, when it comes to the Philippine market, our buyers are, of course, very price conscious and, of course, very, very brand conscious. So, really, what the Chinese automakers are trying to do, they're trying to offer you more size, more everything for less. And that's what Jetour, a relatively new brand here in the Philippines, actually very new, is offering us. Now, in terms of uh, where Jetour actually sits over in China, is it's actually part of the Cherry Group, which is why when you look all around the vehicle, when we show you the engine bay, all that stuff, you'll see a lot of Cherry logos there that look like the, the symbol of the Anhui province, hence the A. Bet you didn't know that. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. But yes, what they're doing is that they're undercutting in terms of price, but when it comes to size, well, they are overcutting. Because when you compare this to a lot of its competitors for the same price, it's going to be much larger. The way I see it, you can actually put this up against something like the Okavango, because this is a seven-seater. This is not just a five-seater SUV. So there is a third row, two, three, two. But still, what's great here, what do you think of the design? because it's pretty striking the way they have the headlights, the LEDs down there. You also have the very, very prominent grille on it, but also the color, it's very, very unique. The X70 is pretty big because considering what you get for this kind of price point, you don't really get this kind of size. But looking at the side, it does look quite nice. There is a bit of chrome, especially down there. It, it kind of is, yeah, it's there, but What's interesting is that when you look at uh, any car, regardless of where it's manufactured, the biggest indication of quality and consistency is actually right here, the windowsill. If you look at how it all aligns, it shows you the kind of attention to build quality. Because this is something I, I would tell you now that sometimes even the Germans get wrong when it comes to their car. So yeah, I hope they're not gonna get mad at me for saying that, but sometimes yes. So in this one, it's actually nice and level, so all well and good. Now you can see the impression of height that the X70 Plus gives. You also get uh, roof rails up top, which you can mount to. I think there are, there are points there which you can attach to it or something, which is pretty cool. But the rear design, let me know what you think of it in the comments below, because I reckon the way they did this top part is very nice. Uh, the way they did the taillights is very nice. But there is something that's uh, kind of bugging me. You can see it right down there. Fake tailpipes, four of them. And the real exhaust of the X70 is actually on that side. Now with the boot open, uh, what you get is a seven-seater SUV. I mean, that's what this is, third row. Uh, in this configuration, you have about 12 inches from here to there and then the maximum width over there is about 51. But once you start folding down things, well, it gets a bit more interesting because you have a space that's about 39 inches from here to there and then 38 inches wide. The height from here up to there is about 30 inches. So keep that in mind when you're uh, planning your shopping trips. But of course, there are other ways to reconfigure your cabin once you open up the vehicle. And that is when it comes to folding down the third row, which is actually easy and one touch. And when you do, by the way, it's 60-40 split. So when you do fold it down, right here, it kind of locks in nicely. The space that you have is about 64 inches long. Plenty for most purposes. And what's also nice, there's also a compartment here for tools and stuff. Uh, it's of course a power tailgate and there's a little ledge to prevent things from rolling back should you not want them rolling back. Let's see if we can fold it down remotely. There you go. One of the things I like most about the X70 Plus is the way the hood opens. Because normally, when you pop the hood, you have to go around the front to kind of put your hand in there and then 
flick a toggle switch or a yeah, lever, and then it's, it's often kind of hot to be able to open it. Well, this one, it's kind of hands-free. Now that's pretty cool. I'll give you two seconds to guess what the engine of this one is gonna be. Actually, it's apparently right there already. It's a 1.5 liter turbo gasoline engine. And the 1.5 liter is one of the big reasons why many Chinese cars are very, very affordable here in our market because it gives them an import duty advantage, very, very minimal import duty, so they can price it very affordably for our market. That's why if you see a lot of Chinese cars, if it's 1.5 liter, usually it's very competitively priced. Once you go up to 1.6 or even 2 liter, the price jumps are actually significant. So yes, 1.5 liter turbo gasoline engine. It makes 156 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque. It's mated to a wet type DCT, yes, dual clutch transmission, and it's uh, driving the front wheels, I think. I did not see an axle in the back. Let's double check that. But what's interesting here is the intake system. Well, for one, it starts with the air filter, which has kind of got a waffle pattern. Makes me want to go to Pancake House for waffles. But the turbo is over there in the back. Uh, that's why there's heat shielding there for the firewall, the bulkhead. Uh, it sends the compressed air or the, the boosted air to the front. And what's interesting here is that I've been looking at if where the intercooler is because if it's going right to the front you kind of think wait a minute there's no intercooler there but apparently there might be because there's a little box there that looks like an air water intercooler similar to what we saw in some of the GACs so if that is the case we'll have to verify that so there is an, a, a water intercooler there giving you power which is pretty cool let's see it's a very neat engine bay but what's really interesting here is what's inside so let's show you So our review of the interior of the X70 Plus, not off to a great start if we're starting from the third row because this third row is not fantastic. If there's anything comparable to it that we've tried before, it was with the CRV, I think Gen uh, 4, I think, when they put an accessory seat here in the back. That's what it feels like to me. It's like, just put a cushion here, put a backrest, and then called it a day, but they didn't move down, uh, they didn't move the seat up or uh, move the floor down to give you something comfortable. They didn't make it theater-like by moving your uh, the actual position up because even with my height, I'm almost touching the ceiling, which is kind of you know weird. So it just feels strange for someone of my height, and I'm not a tall guy, to be uh, seated here. And also getting in and out, if you actually move back a little bit, Barney, you can show them this. There's actually no way to tumble the, third, uh, the second row. So it's only, it only slides forward. I think that's the maximum slide it goes. Uh, that you can also fold it flat, but getting in and out is going to be tough, as you can see from all the scuff marks of us trying to get in and out of here. But still, there's also no uh, AC here in the back. So yeah, the third row, not a big fan, and I just want to get up in front to be able to review more of the vehicle. Now, if only I can get out with ease. So, after that experience in the third row, the middle row is actually, wow, it's a lot nicer. Uh, because you've got nicer seats, you're seated more. You can also see that there are some more amenities here in the middle. You have pockets for your phone. It's my phone right there going there, pockets here, pockets there. Two AC vents there, nice. It's always appreciated, especially with leather seats. You have a pocket here, two charging ports, USB uh, type A, and then you have a compartment here for stuff but what's interesting is if you look down at the floor because well you have these quilted uh, mats that many Chinese automakers are famous for that's always nicely appreciated uh, you also have the panoramic glass roof there giving you a nice view of you know the sky if you really want that uh, you also have hooks on every post here uh, for the headrest of the front seats so that's pretty useful I think maximum three kilos 
each one of these. What else can we talk about? The seats are plush, this is 60-40 folding. But what's really curious about uh, one of the decisions they made here is that there's no armrest here in the middle. That's kind of standard. From the moment you sit on the driver's seat, you get the idea that uh, Jetour really is trying to impress you. And that's always a good thing because you look around, the design actually, it actually looks really nice. Because with this screen, well not really screen, uh, the double screen here with the housing looks very nice. The padding on the dashboard, this is not plastic by the way, there's some kind of material that's soft touch. Also very nice here, the leather, leatherette. I'm not sure what this what that is, but it does feel like it. Uh, the engine start stop button looks very, it looks like a bezel of a watch, you know, the coin bezel type uh, on the on the the bezel of the watch. Um, it's very nice. Three AC vents, touch panel here, the silver brush trim here. It's actually very nice. Buttons seem to be all well and good, nicely torqued. Shifter here, steering wheel. I think they really executed it well. And also when you sit on the seat. It is really plush, even though it doesn't look plush. Although what I will say is that um, it's not for my body size uh, because the way they bolstered it uh, with the backrest is a bit narrow. So it's not for everyone, but if you fit in that, great. But yes, it's soft, it's comfortable. Uh, AC is now on, of course. You have, it's a power seat by the way, and the adjustment is up here on the door. So you wanna move back right up there which is nice because instead of reaching over here well you can you know scratch your watch which I, I don't have my watch with me right now but uh, this makes it a bit easier normal on a lot of luxury cars window buttons there what's also interesting here is the door opening because it's a soft soft open which is a soft close kind of thing well not really the way I slammed it now but still uh, buttons here the controls you have uh, the, the controls for your audio system here on the left, you have the cruise control here and uh, to control the multi-info display there. It does have uh, tire pressure monitoring, which actually is on an alarm right now, an alert begging me to take a look at it. Uh, it's actually, I may need to reset that later on. But you have a speedometer on the left, tachometer on the right, a very conventional display. It actually changes when you flick this switch because it goes into different modes for the transmission, for the drive, so you have sport. And you have Eco, which goes green, and then Normal is somewhere, uh, activated somewhere else. But here in the middle, you have your multimedia system. It's actually interesting how they put it on the on the brochure because it says it's a discless DVD. It's like weird because disc is part of DVD. Anyways, but you have USB video if you want to play, uh, don't, you know, don't do that while driving. Uh, USB photo, USB music. Digital video recorder, which is basically the dash cam, uh, but you have to put a SD card, which I don't have right now. Uh, you also have a few things here, but what you don't have is Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Instead, what you get is CarBit, which uh, I already deleted from my phone uh, from the last time I used it. But yeah, not a big fan of CarBit Link, uh, but uh, also with your phone, you there's a compartment here which would be perfect for a wireless charger, but you don't get a wireless charger in this one. Instead, what you get are two USB ports, and just to show that there is no uh, Android Auto, well, you can actually plug in, there's a data port on the left, and then power outlet only on the right. And when you plug it in, even though when you, let's say, select uh, Android Auto there, nothing's gonna happen because it doesn't have it. So unfortunately, that's the case. Hopefully they address it in the future because it's kind of standard features now for uh, you know people looking for a car. You have two cup holders here. Uh, you also have your control panel for the drive system here. To be honest with you, this is my first time in a jet tour. Actually, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Is it really jet tour or is it like French, like jet tour? But whatever the case, it's my first time in a jet tour, jet tour. And I have no you know, history knowledge of jet tour to speak of. 
Uh, but I do quite, have quite a bit of history and experience uh, driving around uh, in a Cherry. And in, in the Cherries that I've driven in the past, uh, we've always noted that there are things to improve, there are always uh, things to work on. And that's always the, really the case uh, for many vehicles. There's always something, even if a Toyota like that one, a Corolla Cross, when I reviewed that, uh, there were, I noted a lot of things that needed to be improved. Same with the Cherries I've driven in the past. What's good about Cherry is that they actually do work on it. And when, you, when, when I compare, let's say, the, my memories of the first generations of Cherries I drove compared to the ones now, the improvement is like, you know, night and day in terms of quality, in terms of everything. And now that these uh, other brands are coming from the same group, we're seeing all the improvements already, especially when it comes to ride, like how it goes over those expansion joints, uh, ruts, uh, concrete, like corrugated concrete. This is actually really, really good compared to where it was before. And when you actually listen to it, there's actually not much noise. And that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for, you don't want to hear things that you shouldn't be hearing while you're driving. No, I mean, tire noise is one thing, but uh, you hear things like, uh, like the body squeaking or creaking or something like that. You don't want to hear that kind of th uh, thing. You don't want to hear like, body panels uh, squeaking, making all these noises. And I'm not getting anything from the, the Jet Tour, which is actually really good. We've been getting around uh, 9.5 uh, kilometers per liter in the city, average speed of about 25 kilometers per hour, which isn't too bad considering the size of the vehicle. Uh, also on the highway, we're getting around 15, average speed of about 90. Again, pretty good for something this big, but do take note that uh, if you put, let's say, seven people in here, it's going to be nowhere near uh, that fuel economy because it's still a fairly small engine. The effort you, the, the engine needs to exert to be able to move this uh, vehicle along with people is going to be more. And that means you're going to be revving more and the fuel economy is not going to be great. So keep that in mind. Once you have people inside, it's going to be uh, totally different. But the, the thing we're really noticing with the transmission is that in low speed city driving, the, the shifting is actually smooth, which is pretty good, but it tends to hold on to the lower gear a bit too long, maybe just for about uh, two or three seconds too long, like uh, to the point that sometimes the RPM ends up at around maybe 2,500 RPM, which you don't want for fuel economy. It would be so much more efficient if, uh, if it wasn't that way, but yeah, still considering we're getting 9.5, not too bad. Now this wouldn't be a Vince review if I wasn't uh, pointing out the things that are really, uh, not really, yeah, kind of bugging me. Uh, for one, uh, the air from the outside is actually coming into the cabin, like the, the smells. And I have the recirculate uh, function on, yet still when I pass over, let's say a canal or uh, uh, somewhere near a sidewalk where there's a, a grill for the sewer, I can smell it. Uh, it's not very pleasant. So maybe that's something with the system, maybe there's a fault there. Uh, also, uh, when it comes to the tire pressure, I, I pointed it out earlier, is that uh, the front right tire, I think the TPS, uh, TPMS on that one, the sensor, is actually dead. Uh, so it's still alerting. Uh, again, right now you can hear the transmission holding on to the gear as well. Very minor things. This can do with, with really some fine tuning. and. That's actually one of the things that, that we noticed here uh, early on. Some more fine tuning uh, that they can get it up really to something that's really nice uh, for export markets such as ours. And like right now, I can smell the, the, the exhaust from outside from the jeepney. So yeah, still recirculate is on. So uh, there you go. The X70 Plus certainly has a lot of promise. And a lot of the things I note here can be improved on. Uh, either through the quality control department or through, let's say, uh, product planning, like putting in a few more features. You know, like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto would really be nice for a lot of us who use smartphones nowadays. The Carbit Link, yeah, no, not really. Not a big fan of those, but still, uh, the fact that they can offer this, something this big for a price like this, is very, very good. It's very, very interesting. And that's going to come into play as uh, car makers, especially the established ones, the Japanese ones, Koreans ones, the, the prices of them are going to go up and up and up, especially as the cost of components and parts go up and up and up. That's just the way it is. Uh, and 
the more they do that, the more it's going to carve out a, uh, a space, a gap for uh, the Chinese automakers to exploit and to really maximize by giving customers better cars uh, for less money. Now, Jatur, I think it's on the way there. And once they work out some of the kinks we've noticed here, this is going to be a really interesting uh, class to pay attention to because seven seater, 1.5 million with a long warranty. Yeah, let's go back to the warehouse and talk about it. The Jatur X70 Plus is indeed an interesting proposition. At 1.499 million, it is offering you more size for the price, more style, more a lot of things, really. So that's what they're trying to offer. It even comes with a six-year warranty, bumper, bumper to bumper, and then uh, a 10-year warranty on the powertrain, on the engine. Now, there are some things here that we think they should also address, like decisions with the product planning when it comes to the features inside, like why delete the center armrest in the middle row? That's something that would have made a big difference as well, especially as a lot of customers of this kind of vehicle, they like to sit in the back. There's also no Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto. They can also work on uh, the way the DCT, the wet DCT, actually shifts for a bit of uh, better comfort in the city. But of course, all of these are details that can be addressed later on, and we certainly hope they do. And yeah, Jatur really wants to make a big impression here. And the X70 Plus is kind of ready to do that. We'll see how these vehicles uh, get on later on. But really, if you want to find out more, you should really test drive one of these to see if it fits your lifestyle. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching. Watch out for more from Jatur here on AutoIndustria.com.